I won the Fraternity in 1992, and my horse's name was Doc's Miss in Reno. She was by missing cash out of Paloma Coyote. The thing I remember most about that night, it was the first time that I'd ever made the fraternity finals. And I was just so excited to be there and, and kind of take in that moment. And so that was the funnest thing for me that night, at, you know, starting off. Uh, my horse's personality was one that she was very cowy. But she had a mind of her own. Like she tried to kick my left foot out of the stirrup the whole three year old year until about a week before the fraternity started. I think my the favorite thing I uh, I liked about that Mary, she was so gritty. She was just really cowy and the cow was very important to her. How I got that mare is she was in uh, Oxbow's barn Oxbow Ranch and my good friend Tom Ryan was managing that ranch at the time. They were fitting her for the yearling sale and he told me, he says, hey there's a yearling filly in here you might want to take a look at and see if you can get some client to buy her. So we came down to the sale and we looked at her and Stan and Lynn Warren is the ones that owned her and they purchased her there. I first realized that, she, that Doc's Miss in Reno was special about June of that uh, three-year-old year. She, she always worked a cow good, but about June of that three-year-old year, she really started thinking and, and kind of stepped up so much faster in 30 days of what she had up to that time. So it was about June of her three-year-old year, I thought I had a real nice horse. I think the thing that makes winning the fraternity so special for me is I've realized when I won the fraternity that night, I don't think I really realized what I'd accomplished. It was the first year I'd ever been to the fraternity and I was pretty young. I'd only been on my own from Tom Lyons's for four years. And winning the fraternity for me now is realizing just what I did accomplish and that it doesn't come very easy and it's a lifelong dream of a lot of people to be able to accomplish that. I think my first big purchase with my share of the earnings is uh, Jill and I put in a cement driveway at our house. <laughs> You know, you th the, one of the toughest things for me, showing at Will Rogers, you think it should be easy to mark a 72. But for some reason in that pen, if you can mark a 72 or a 216 on your, on your run, you've did pretty good. Because I think the size of the pen, uh, uh, the, the size of the building, and the cattle have such an impact working here, I think that that's the most difficult, is just going out and trying to mark a 72. Well, winning the fraternity, I'm not sure changed my life. Anyway, I hope it didn't change my, my life on how I act and the things that I do. What it did change was it gave me the confidence to think that I can compete with these guys. I live in Idaho and that's a place where it's certainly not the hub of the cutting horse industry. And so it's a little bit harder up there and you get that far away and a lot of times you think, man, I'm not sure I'm good enough to compete. And so winning the fraternity made me realize, yes, you are good enough to compete. It's the horsepower that you have under you allows you to be in that uh, that atmosphere or that that uh, position to be able to to win. One of my favorite fraternity runs that I've seen in this building was Bill Freeman on Highbrow Hickory. That run for me was, uh, and I was pretty young back then, I was still working for Tom Lyons, if I remember right, and that horse was just awesome that night. 
And of course, everybody knows Bill, he never holds back. And he just laid down a run on that horse. He lost a cow in one of the go rounds. It might, might have been the first round, and he came back and marked, so he made the semis with the run after he'd already lost a cow. So that run there, that was awesome for me. Well, the way in which I think the fraternity's changed is certainly the competition has gotten better. Uh, the trainers have becoming more prepared, and there's different influences that has uh, cause that. I think uh, the horses have become better, the breeding program has become better, and different trainers uh, throughout the industry, there's not just a few guys that can train a horse anymore. There's a lot of guys that can train a horse and do a good job, and I think that's probably, for me, the biggest thing that's changed. 